Hi everyone, Linda Israel here, and I'm creating this video today for those out there that are new to junk journaling and want to know how to make a basic junk journal. And I made it a certain size, and it's called a traveler's notebook size. I've got a sheet of ivory, navy and ivory chevron from Canvas Corp Brands. It's a really nice card stock. It's ivory on one side. It has this beautiful chevron on the front. And what I've decided is I want this to be my cover of my traveler's notebook insert. So I'm going to cut this to eight and a quarter inches. And I want, this is going to be my up and down when you're looking at the journal. So I want that to go in that direction and not the other. So that's why I'm cutting it this way. And then when I am thinking about my cover, sometimes what I like to do is go ahead and leave part of this 12 inches out here. And I just score it at four and a quarter. I'll go ahead and fold this over to make sure that it's all flush. And then I will put this back on my trimmer here that I use for a ruler. And I'm scoring with a stylus. Like so. Now if you don't have these types of tools, if you are new to paper crafts, you can use a ruler and you can use a dull a empty ballpoint pen to score with so you don't have to have all these fancy tools you can just get a ruler and a ballpoint pen and just mark down where you need to mark this is just something that i've used for years because it's easy for me so i've cut down what's going to be my cover. I don't know if yet, do I want this to be on the front of the book or do I want this to be at the back of the book? I think I'm gonna do it at the front. So this is gonna be the beginnings of the front cover. I've got a scrap piece of a map and then I have a calendar page. This is one of those daily pages that you tear it off and flip it over depending on what month it is, and then at the end of the year, you're done with it. Well, one of my co-workers saved all of these images for me back in 2006, and I hadn't used all of them, so I thought I'd use one of these today. So I'm trimmed off the header portion, because I didn't want that, and I think what I want is this side of the card or photo to show up on my front. So I'm just kind of looking on my paper turner. What would that look like? I think that would be a good view. I'm hoping you can see this. So I'm going to trim this down. And I have an extra image that I can use. Because this is the image I want to put on the front of the journal. So the next thing I'm going to do is looking at this map piece. I think I want to go ahead and have it go from edge to edge. So I'm going to trim this at eight and a quarter inches. And this will go on the front here. And then this will go over it. And then I've got a couple of big pieces of washi tape. So I'm going to start adhering these pieces together. I'm going to do two things. I'm going to use my Brutus Monroe all-purpose craft glue to glue down the map. And I'm just going to put a little bit on here. It doesn't need a ton. This comes out really thin and fine. And then don't drop it like I did. And then I'm just going to place this on here like so. And then I'm going to do the same with the C view. I just love how bright and pretty that is right off the bat. So I've got a couple of rolls of washi tape and I think what I want to do is I'm just going to do this kind of like a haphazard sideways look. Sometimes that it doesn't appeal to me, but today I kind of like it. Thank you. 
Well, now that I've got the washi where I want it, I think what I want to do next is I want to stitch around this. So I'm going to take it to my sewing machine and I'll stitch around it and I'll be right back. So there's the cover with the sewn on the sewing around it. I just think that adds just that one more little piece of texture. This is the inside and I sometimes leave this, sometimes I take another image and cover it up. I think I may do that with this piece because it kind of fits right in there, doesn't it? So when you open your journal, you can look here and see a pretty image. All right, I'm gonna glue this down. And I'm going to use some washi tape to add some more texture. There. So that's my cover that I'm going to use for my journal. I also stamp it. I have a little stamp that I had custom made. And so I'll stamp that down in the corner. And then what I'll do next is I go through all the papers in my stash and doing the same concept of eight and a quarter tall and scoring at four and a quarter inches you can use regular letter size paper so this was letter size paper that I trimmed I also printed the lines on there so that's a page that'll go in my journal and I think what I want to do is I want to start with the map page as my first page in the journal and what I did was I cut it to be eight and a half inches wide and it was a little bit longer here on the bottom so I went ahead and folded it up so it gives a nice little natural pocket there so that'll go here I'll do this one next I've got a piece of scrapbook paper that I've done the same technique as far as folding is concerned I have another water image, so I'm going to fold that in half and stick it in here. Copy paper, not copy paper, notebook paper. Put that in there. And then let's see. I've got a dictionary page. So the dictionary page, I've done the same thing I, I, as I've done on others. I have cut off the excess paper and then sewed it back on up here. I did that because I wanted these words to be right side up. Otherwise, you can fold it up and only sew on the sides. I have this little piece of paper that's actually a desk pad for notes that's for the different days of the week and I just thought well it's pretty it's blue I'll put that inside I have a paper out of my spray box when I spray things with tattered angels glimmer mist I save the little pieces of paper and the reason why this is sewed on here I'm doing it on a white one. It has a letterhead on here. So I cut this part off and then pasted it down here, or in my case, sewed it. And now that it's covered up the information and made that a usable page that anyone can write on. So I've got another scrapbook page. I have a grid page. So you may not be able to see that in the camera, but that is grid. And then I have a page out of a coloring book that I folded up. 
And then on the very center, I'm going to have this scrapbook that folds out. So what do we've got here? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve sheets of paper. I didn't count the calendar page. I just kept that as a small image in here that I'm not really choosing to call that a page. So now what I'm doing is I'm looking at all the papers and I'm lining them up to the center to be able to be caught into the binding in the next portion. And then I, oops, I forgot the cover. Gotta have the cover. So then I take some large paper clips you can use clothes pins, you could use bull nose clips, whatever works for you. And then I have a little template. What I've done is I've measured a piece of cardboard or packing, folded it in half and marked it so that's my center. And then about an inch and a half from each end I measured in and made holes. So this template works for other books that I work with but for the traveler's notebook it's perfect because I'm just going to make holes right down the center so I line this up and then I have an awl that I use and awl is a sharp pointy thing with a needle and I'm gonna poke all the way through this well you can do this just by holding it in your hand or you can do it on a piece of fun foam but I have a cradle that my husband made for me and so it's a book binders cradle and I'm gonna use that Okay, so I've got this in my little book binder's cradle. I'm going to get this out of the way so you can see. So I've got my little template laid inside my book. I'll make sure that it's in the center. And then I'm going to poke all the way down through the center straight as possible. And that will punch holes all the way through. Using the cradle helps get all those pages down into the V and they won't have holes kind of off the crease line that you may have made in the center like I have. So see, you can see those nice dark holes in there. That means it's punched and it looks like I did pretty good at punching it in the center. All right, so now I'm at the point of stitching the pages together. I have wax linen thread. I've also used hemp cord, which is heavier. Since this is basically a blue themed book, I'm going to use the white hemp cord. And I measure one, two, three lengths. It's more than you need. It just makes it easier when you do this so you can tie it off and, of course, pull it through all the holes. So I just loop a little bit on. And then I start in the center and go to the outside and pull this but you want to make sure you leave a little tail on the inside you may have to hold it or you may be able to just say please don't come in don't leave oh, sometimes I can't see that hole when I go from the outside in okay there it is so then I go from the center to the top and then I grab a hold of the tail that's inside and pull these strings towards each other at the op at a, like a opposite directions. And then I'm going to go back down through the center again. Make sure I can see this hole on the outside. Okay. And then I'm going to go from the outside. Come on now. 
whenever I'm doing a video is when it didn't want to cooperate. So now we're going to the inside from the outside. And then I catch it under the top thread and pull. And then I tie a square knot. And then I tie one more square knot. And I don't want this hanging out of the book, so I'm going to cut that off. And then I've got some butterflies that I punched out of the map image that I had. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on the butterfly. And then I use the string to spread around the glue and stick it where the body would be on my little butterfly. You can use a heart punch. You can not use anything. You can use uh, little circles or other little die cut shapes that you may already have. I'm going to do this again. Okay. I don't know if you can hear it, but there's an ice cream truck driving by. I can hear it going off. Even in my room, it's surrounded by craft supplies. So there, really quick. That is a traveler's notebook. I may not even edit out all of the time. I don't know yet where it's silent, so you can really see how long it took me to make this. Now, granted, I did have my papers cut before I started the video, but I think you didn't need to sit and watch me cut paper. I think you get the idea of how this comes together. Now this is what I call a simple junk journal with a, not a bunch of embellishments. So it's ready for the next step, which is for you to decorate it with your words or images or found objects. I just like to get a start here. Now if I'm going to go into heavy embellishing it, I won't bind it together until I'm done decorating the pages. But I decided today I would just show you how to make a basic traveler's notebook. These fit in a standard traveler's notebook cover. For example, I have a Jane Davenport's um, journal cover that you can paint and decorate and it fits right in. You can see that. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed seeing how to make this beautiful blue traveler's, simple traveler's notebook. And if you did, please just give this video a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. And of course, comment to bo below what you thought about this journal. And if there's any tutorials that you would like to have me do, just let me know. I greatly appreciate it. If you haven't already, subscribe to my channel and have a fabulous day. Bye.